Welcome to the third segment in Tecmar's snow melting webinar training series. This segment is going to focus on Tecmar snow melt sensors and we'll look at which sensors are compatible with which of Tecmar snow melt controls and then we'll look at those individual sensors, how we operate them and how we install them. The outline for the presentation is to begin by looking at all of the Tecmar snowmelt sensors and looking at which sensors are compatible with which snowmelt controls. Then we'll take a closer look at the snowmelt sensors and we'll compare them. What does each sensor option allow us to do in the way of control? Then we'll look at the concept of slab temperature control and which sensors will allow for that. We'll look at slab outdoor reset and then we'll look at how to operate and install each individual snowmelt sensor. Now this chart shows the Tecmar snowmelt controls that we have available and which sensors are compatible with those snowmelt controls. So on the top left hand side of the chart you can see we have the 664, 665 and 667. Now these snowmelt controls are compatible with the snow ice sensor 090094. You could also choose to connect it to the 072 or 073 slab sensor. So you can have the automatic start and automatic stop option with the 090094 or you can just have a, a manually operated system and install the slab sensor to provide some slab temperature control. And we'll look at that more later on in the presentation. Our other snowmelt control, our newest snowmelt control, is the snowmelt control 654. Now this is our new touchscreen snowmelt control. And it is compatible with the same two sensors that we discussed earlier but it is also compatible with a new sensor, the snow sensor 095. Now this is our aerial mounted sensor that we discussed in the previous training block. This is the sensor that we would use for retrofits or if we've mistakenly poured concrete without installing the 091 socket. Now you'll notice that the 095 is only compatible with the snow mount control 654. You cannot connect the 095 to the 664, 665, or 667. It will not work. So if you're thinking about installing the snow sensor 095, it means you also need the snowmelt control 654. Now we'll look at each of these sensor options for the 654, and we'll look at what each of those sensors can provide from a control standpoint. As mentioned, the Tecmar Snowmelt Control 654 is compatible with three optional sensors. Your first option is to go with the 090 or 094 together with the socket 091. Now the difference between the 090 and the 094 is just cable length. With the 090, you have 20 feet and with the 094 you have 208 feet so it depends on what your needs are but going with the longer uh, cable will prevent you from having to splice in the field. The 654 is also compatible with the 095 which is our new aerial snow sensor um, and we have the 072 and 073 slab sensor as well. So each of these sensors will provide you with different control possibilities and we'll take a look at that in the next few slides. Now the 654 can be operated without a sensor. Of course, we never recommend that. Um, the point of having a control like the 654 is to be able to better control your snowmelt system and without the input from sensors in the slab, we won't be able to do that. So it's always recommend to use at least one of these sensors for an efficient snow melting system. Now what can these different sensors do for you? Well the 090 or 094 will give you the automatic start and stop that we discussed in the previous training block. So this is our sensor that can automatically detect the presence of moisture to start your snow melt system and will detect when it is dry to automatically stop the snow melt system. Since there's also a sensor included that measures the slab temperature, it introduces the feature for slab temperature control. And we'll talk about that in the upcoming slides. 
If you go with the 095, the aerial mounted snow sensor, you have the automatic start and timed stop option that we talked about in the previous training block. So this would be a great uh, scenario for retrofits or if you've mistakenly poured the concrete before installing the socket, you have the option to still have at least the automatic start by installing the 095 snow sensor. What the 095 does not offer you is slab temperature control. There is no sensor in the slab to be able to accurately control the slab temperature. However, you could combine the 095 with the slab sensor 072 or 073. If you use it on its own, the slab sensor could provide manual operation and it does offer slab temperature control as well. Combined with the 095, you get the automatic start and time stop. In addition, you get the slab temperature control. So when installing the 095, if possible, we do recommend installing the slab sensor as well. Now what is slab temperature control? In order to provide that, we of course need to measure the temperature of the slab. So we do show here a sensor peeking out there, and that is measuring the core temperature. Now we can vary the core temperature of the slab in order to keep a relatively constant slab surface temperature. Now because the slab surface temperature is of course going to change as outdoor temperature changes, it means varying the temperature of the slab core in accordance to the outdoor temperature with the goal always being to maintain that relatively constant slab surface temperature. And as we talked about in the previous blocks, that does allow for an efficient snowmelt system. We are delivering the right amount of heat to the slab. We're not having a slab that runs wild. So as we mentioned, the slab core temperature will vary with the outdoor temperature to give you that stable slab surface temperature. So here you can see a chart. As the outdoor temperature drops, the slab core temperature will rise. So here at 20 degrees Fahrenheit, our slab core temperature could be 46 degrees Fahrenheit. If that temperature drops to minus 10, we could be looking at 55 degrees Fahrenheit for a slab core temperature. So what our snow melting controls do is we measure the outdoor temperature, and we automatically adjust the slab core temperature, the goal always being to maintain a constant slab surface temperature. And this slab surface temperature will be in accordance to what you set up when you program the snow melting control. Now why is slab temperature control so important? Well, it will make sure that we are delivering the right amount of heat to the slab. And in doing so, we are also minimizing our heat losses. So if you look at this chart here, if we increase the slab surface temperature by 10 degrees, so from 35 to 45 Fahrenheit, you can see our heat losses at the slab have increased from 15% to 25%. So we want to keep our slab surface at the lowest possible temperature that it needs to be in order to melt the snow. And we do that so that we have a more efficient system, we are controlling the heat to the slab, and we are minimizing our heat losses. So we're going to take a look at the 090 and 094. So this is a fully automatic snow ice sensor. It starts the snow melt cycle whenever moisture is detected, so whenever snow or ice is present. And it stops the system when the slab is dry. The way it does that is it looks to see if the sensor is dry. Once the sensor itself is dry, then the control will go through an additional melt time that is programmed by the user. It's called the additional melt time, and we'll look at that later in the training slides. Proper installation of the 090 or 094 sensor is critical. So 
It's important that the sensor is not installed in areas that will be covered by vehicles. We don't want it near any building overhangs, bushes, trees, or protection. We want it installed in the last place to be warmed by the sun and the last place for drainage to dry it off. And of course, the first place to be affected by a snowfall. So we do want to keep it on as long as there is snow on the slab. So it should have an accurate representation of the conditions of the slab. Now what we've shown here are two different installation types. On the left hand side you can see the sensor is on a level surface. And you can see the top of the sensor is flush to the snow melt surface. Now some driveways are sloped. I know this is probably an accurate representation of my own driveway. And in this case, we are going to install the sensor so it is still flush with the surface. It too is on a slope. And we want it to be near the lowest elevation of the slope. The reason we want it to be at the lowest elevation is because we don't want the sensor to be dry while perhaps the bottom of the, sl of the slope is still wet. Because then the sensor would say, okay, I'm dry. Go through our add melt time. We run the risk of there still being some melt water at the bottom of the slope. And that melt water could refreeze. So that's why it's important if you do have a slope driveway to install that sensor near the lowest elevation of the slope. Now to install the 090 or 094, we of course need the 091 socket, shown here, and the mounting plate, which is shown here. Now we're going to use the mounting plate and fasten that to the snow melt surface, and then we can attach the socket to the plate itself. So let's take a look at the layout of this plate. You can see there are a number of holes in the plate. Number one in the center of the plate is the drainage hole. Now drainage is extremely important because we want to make sure that we don't have a situation where the socket fills with water and then the sensor is essentially sitting in a pool of water. What that could lead to is the corrosion of the internal wiring of the sensor. So to avoid that, drainage is absolutely essential. There is that hole in the center of the plate for drainage. The plate should be installed on top of gravel to allow for that drainage to occur. If we are installing it on another surface, make sure that there is a hole in that surface as well to allow for the drainage to occur. Now number two, a series of four holes are the socket screw holes to attach the socket to the plate. You can see also four holes the same size on the outside corners of the plate and that is for the rebar holes. So we'll put rebar through those holes into the surface and that is of course to fix the plate and the corresponding socket to the snow melt surface. Number four, the rebar tie holes. And you can see we've illustrated how to fasten the plate to the rebar. Lastly, we have two holes labeled number five. And those are the conduit tie holes. So you can fasten the conduit to run the cable back to the snow mount control. Now when we install the 090, the 094, we of course have to make sure that the socket and the plate are mounted to the snowmelt surface before the concrete is poured. You wouldn't believe how often it happens that that is forgotten and then of course it's very difficult to install the 090 or 094 snow and ice sensor. You'd have to actually core the concrete to do so. Um, so make sure that is in place before the concrete has been poured. We also have included a plastic plug, you can see here. So the plastic plug would go on top of the socket, then the concrete would be poured. Once that concrete has cured, we can remove the plastic plug and insert the sensor. 
and run the cable through the conduit. If you don't have a 090094, you can still have slab temperature control. And you can do so by having just a slab sensor input into the slab. Of course, this way you don't get the automatic start and stop, but you will have slab temperature control. So here we have an illustration where we have our slab sensor in the conduit. And you can see it's halfway between the pipes. We'll look at that closer on the following slide. So here's our conduit, here's our sensor. It is halfway between the pipes, or if you're doing electric snow melt, halfway between the cables. And we have it shown to be approximately one inch below the snow melt surface. Then we have our newest sensor, the Snow Sensor 095. And that is an aerial mounted sensor that can detect falling snow. So this gives you the automatic start and timed stop operation that we've discussed. So the stop is provided by the 654. It has an internal timer. And once that time has expired, the snow melt system will return to its off state. This is a great way, as I've mentioned, to add some automatic operation to an ex existing snowmelt system, but you do need to use the 654 snowmelt control. So you cannot connect the 095 to Tecmar's other snowmelt controls. It must be connected to the 654 and only the 654. Let's take an exploded view at the snow sensor 095. We have the outer ring at the top. Underneath that we have the blue sensor disc. And then we have the sensor enclosure and you can see that it's slightly tilted. Now that is just to allow for drainage to occur. We don't want water pooling near the blue sensor disc. And then we have the conduit adapter. That the, snow, that the sensor enclosure will attach to. There are four wires that will run from this sensor to the Snowmelt Control 654, the yellow, blue, red, and black. So those of you who are familiar with the 090, the 094, you will of course notice that we have four wires instead of five that you were used to with the 090094. And that is, of course, because we are losing the slab sensor wire, that brown slab sensor wire, because, of course, we are not actually in the slab. This sensor is an aerial sensor, so we can't monitor the slab temperature. Now, how would you install the 095? Well, on the left-hand side, we have it installed just outside on the side of the snowmelt surface. So this would be an example of a retrofit location or again one of those mistaken I've poured the concrete before installing the socket scenarios. You could still have the automatic start by installing the 095 to the side of the snowmelt surface. We also have it shown here installed on a roof. So we can have it on the top of the roof I've shown here with this boot. You can also have it attached to the side of the roof. And these are shown in the installation and operation brochure for the 095. Let's take an overall look at the sensor comparison again. We have our three sensors on the side, the 090 or 094. 095 and the slab sensor 072 or 073. So which sensors are going to give you the automatic start? Of course it's going to be the 090 or 094 and the 095. However the only sensor that can give you that automatic stop operation is the 090 or 094. Time stop can be accomplished with the 095 and with the slab sensor 072 or 073. You can do a manual start and stop with any of these sensors. For idling, 
we of course need to be measuring that slab temperature. That's only done with the 090 or 072073. Same with melting, we have to measure the slab temperature, so we need our 090094 or our slab sensor. And slab temperature control is achieved through both of those sensors as well. So if you combine the 095 with the slab sensors 072 and 073, you're merging this automatic start with all these other control features. So a great solution if you cannot install the 090 or 094 is to do the snow sensor 095 with the slab sensor. In summary, we looked at the Tecmar snow melting controls and looked at which sensors are compatible with which controls. We also took a look at snow melting sensors, the sensors that are compatible with our new snow melting control 654. And we compared those sensors. What does each of those sensor options allow us to do from a control perspective? We looked at slab temperature control and slab outdoor reset and why those are important. And remember, the 095 on its own cannot give you that. So if you're going to use the aerial snow sensor 095, we always recommend to also install a slab sem sensor to give you that slab temperature control and to allow for slab outdoor reset. Lastly, we looked at those three individual sensor options and we looked at how they operate and how we install them. And you can stay tuned for our next segment, which would be our snow melt training segment four. And this segment will go over the mechanical diagrams for the seven featured applications of the snow melt control 654 so that you get a good sense of what this control was designed to operate.